weeks ago. Everybody say two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, we had a very powerful night. It was called the uh, Pangahiran gig. And, and for those of you who you saw what happened in YouTube. You saw it. It was actually you guys. It was third gig. And people were like shouting and screaming so hard because they were receiving the blessing. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Is it me or it's you? <laughs> Alright, so, and people were screaming and people were so hungry and thirsty for the word of God. That was like two years ago. Two years ago. <laughs>
into that season of shaking. What do I need to do? So tonight we're going to prepare you guys. We're going to equip you guys. We're going to learn from the Bible. We're going to learn from Jesus himself. We're going to answer the question, what are we going to do when the season of shaking comes along? We're going to read Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. It says here, verse 22. Then Jesus made the disciples get into the boat. If I say boat. And go on ahead to the other side of the lake while he sent the people away. Verse 23. After sending the people away, he went up a hill by himself to walk. Pray. To pray. And by this time, the boat was far out of the lake, tossed, tossed about. Are you getting a picture here? Tossed about by the waves because the wind was blowing against them. Use your imagination. Verse 25, between 3 a.m. and 6 o'clock a.m., Jesus came to the disciples, walking on the water. <laughs> when they saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and screamed with fear. Verse 27, Jesus spoke to them at once. Courage. 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 In the midst of the storm, in the midst of the mighty winds, in the midst of the mighty, mighty waves, in the midst of all this chaos, Jesus enters the picture and delivers a powerful message to his disciples and tells them courage Amen. it is I don't be afraid Hallelujah. actually this is the title of our message today take courage it is I, don't be afraid. Verse 28, then Peter spoke up, Lord, if it is really you, command me, tell me to come out on the water to you. Verse 29, come, Jesus said. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water to Jesus. Yeah, this is like cool, y'all. This is like one of the coolest stories in the Bible. Think about it. We're serving a God, we're worshiping a God who can walk on water. Hallelujah! He doesn't even need a, 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 a surfboard or whatever. And we're not talking about swimming here. We're talking about walking. Hallelujah! And then here's this guy named Peter. Was Jesus, Lord, if it's really you, tell me God, and then, and then Jesus has come, and then, and then, bam, he steps out of the water, and then, whoa, he experiences walking on the water. <laughs> this is for your holiday. Amen. Amen. And the next line says, but when he was shaking, he was afraid, and started to sink down in the water. Save me, Lord, he cried. Verse 10, 31. At once, Jesus reached out and grabbed hold of him and said, What little faith you have? Why did you die? Verse 32, they both got into the boat and the wind died down. Verse 33, then the disciples in the boat worshipped Jesus. Then they said, Truly, you are the Son of God. They exclaimed. And they asked him, Amen. Several things we're going to learn from, from this story. We're going to flow in the spirit tonight. One of the things that I notice is, is the time. I'm about to say time. The Bible tells us that this story happened between 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. 
That means it happened before daybreak. Amen. It's called dawn. Everybody say dawn. Dawn. What happens before sunrise is the dawn. Amen. And scientists are saying that the darkest hour is usually before daybreak. Are you getting this? Uh huh. The darkest hour happens before the sun rises. Hallelujah. And God spoke to me while I was like, whoa, that's nice. I realized this in life, usually, the greatest blessings which is sunrise, amen. The greatest breakthrough which is sunrise, amen. Usually, what happens before that is a season of testing. Amen. That the most difficult time of testing and shaking and trial usually happens before the big breakthrough comes. And how about you receive this right now? If you're undergoing a very difficult situation today and you feel like life is throwing bricks straight to your faces right now and life is becoming so difficult, how about you receive this right now? The greatest blessings and breakthroughs usually happens after the trial. Amen. Tell your neighbor something big is about to happen to your life. Hallelujah. So they were about 600 feet from land, which meant they were totally not in their comfort zone. And if you remember the story, it happened and in the waters, and, and the waters in the Bible was, great, was actually Sea of Galilee, and, and the waves were up and down, which meant that the boat was in danger of, uh, of, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, be of being overset, and the passengers lost. The wind was against them. It was difficult to move forward because there was opposition. And to add to all of this, Jesus was not in the boat. So think about it. Jesus is here. The disciples are here. And then Jesus says, Go, ride the boat. And the disciples say, It's kind of windy, Jesus. It's kind of shaky, Jesus. It's kind of thorny, Jesus. And you're not going with us. You know, in 2012, there will be moments when you will be tested and tried. And you will be tempted to believe that Jesus is not with you. Uh-huh. You're going to pray so hard. Jesus, Jesus, help, help, help. And nothing, nothing seems to be happening. And you start thinking, I think the Lord left me. <laughs> How about you receive this right now? You may think that Jesus is not with you sometimes. You may think that sometimes Jesus is so silent. But how about you believe right now? Jesus will never leave you. Yeah. Jesus will never leave you. Whatever happens. Whatever happens. So, praise God. The disciples obey. They rode the boat. Jesus goes to the hill and pray. And then the boat was there, and then there was a storm, and then there was a wind, and then it was like scary, scary, it was scared and terrified, because the wind was so strong, and then it was shaking, and then the disciples were like tempted to fear, and then all of a sudden, they see a silly wind. A person starts walking on the water and they were terrified. Whoa, who are you? <laughs> In 2012, there will be moments when you will there will be moments when you will be tempted to, to have fear. There will be moments when you will be tempted to believe that Jesus is not with you or God has left you or God has abandoned you. But here's the thing, y'all, just like what happened the story, the Bible tells us that when the disciples were there tempted to just, to just fear, the Bible tells us that Jesus enters the picture just at the right time. How many more you know that Jesus is never late? Yeah. That 
even if you encounter the most difficult tests and trials and situations, how about right now you receive this by faith? Jesus will never be late in your life. Amen. And so he appears. And then he speaks of the powerful words of this powerful promise. And then he says this. Let's read. Take courage. Courage, he said. It is I. Don't be afraid. I looked this up in one of the uh, commentaries and I, and I discovered that the words that he just spoke in Greek or in the Greek Bible was this. May for be his thing. Let me say that again. May for be his thing. Imagine, and like the waves and the waves, and the disciples were terrified, and then they see they see a silhouette, and then they see, and then they, and then they hear this person speak, May for the yes, day. You want to know the direct translation in English? The direct translation of May for the yes, day, the exact words that Jesus said in English means this Stop being. needs to hear this right now. God is saying, please stop being afraid. Somebody here, you're afraid of your thesis. You're afraid of your teacher. You're afraid of your parents. You're afraid of your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Or that point in your life that you just break up with, with that someone or somebody. You're afraid of tomorrow. You're afraid of next week. You're afraid of what's going to happen in the future. God is telling you right now, Is in 
and grow and that he has never departed his with you. The ability to hear and know the voice of God. You'd be hearing a lot of voices, different sounds from different people or from whoever. But when that moment comes, it's your life and it becomes so difficult to believe God for more. You just go back to God and pray to Him, Lord, I want to hear your voice. Give me the ability to know that it is you who is speaking. Peter heard the sound and he had the guts to believe that it was Jesus. That's why he said, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come out of the boat. And then Jesus replied, Woo! Praise the Lord. Jesus replies. And then Jesus says this. Verse 29. Come, answered Jesus. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water to Jesus. So come means Jesus commanded him. Amen? Amen. Uh-huh. And then Peter obeys. Everybody say obeys. obeys. In the seasons of shaking, or for this year, 2012, one of the biggest words to remember is this. Obedience. Tell your neighbor, it's time to obey. When God says, give it up, give it up. When God says, let go, let go. When God says, let go of that old boyfriend, that boyfriend who doesn't love God as much as you do, let him go. When God says, sign the manifesto contract, sign it. When God says, you do fasting, fast. When God says, you attend your life group, attend your life group. You want to stay unshaken? You got to have obedience. Everybody say amen. A lot of people, they are missing out on that exceptional harvest because they don't have obedience. Amen. What if, what if God says, all right, Rue, I got an exceptional harvest for you, but it's there, it's there. Hear the speaker. And then God tells me, do you want your harvest? And I said, yes, Lord. And then, and then Jesus and God says, all right, make, make steps towards there. And then I said, Lord, I don't lie. I don't lie. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. And then you start asking God, Lord, where's my harvest? And then God tells you, you want your harvest? Okay. You go to the place where I'm asking you to go. That is where your harvest is. I'm not angry. <laughs> I'm just caution. Amen. We do not make a move without God's command. We make a move when God gives us the command. And then we hear and know. And then we listen to the word of God. Fire. His word, which is the Bible. Look to your neighbor right now. Look to him or her. Straight in God. Tell him or her, where is your Bible? Where is your Bible? How many of you would like to have your harvest? Amen. Come on. Read the word. In times of uncertainty, in times of trial and testing, when you come to a point where you don't know what to do, and the lights are running crazy, it's going to be all good if you have the Word of God. You will never be lost. You will always find your way if you are grounded in the Word of God.
Let's read Matthew chapter 7, 24 to 29. We're going to read this from the message. It says here, these words I speak to you are not incidental additions to your life, homeowner improvements to your standard of living. They are foundational words, words to build a life on. If you work these words into your life, you are like a smart carpenter who built his house on solid rock. Rain poured down. The river flooded. A tornado hit. But nothing moved the house. It was fixed to the rock. You want to know the secret? It's here. It's here. It's here. Amen. If you don't have a Bible and you have a cell phone, you sell your cell phone and then you buy a Bible. When life comes so hard on you, even if you brush through all your contacts in your cell phone, you'll never be able to find a person who can solve your problem. Amen? But let me tell you, if you dial the number of God, through the Bible. Amen. You will find the only person who can help you. And his name is Jesus. He is your solution. Hallelujah. Now. Remember what happened to Peter? Jesus told him. Come. And then Peter obeyed. He steps out of the boat. Number one. That is exceptional. Amen. Amen. Uh-huh. Number two, he stands on the water. That is so exceptional. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And then he walks on the water too. Those are like three exceptional experiences that he had. You know why all these things happen? It's because he had exceptional obedience. Obedience will be the key this year. Amen. Because an exceptional obedience leads to an exceptional experience. How many more would like to have exceptional divine experience this year? Miracles after miracles after miracles. Breakthroughs after breakthroughs after breakthroughs. Increase after increase after increase. If you want to experience that, Exceptional harvest. You gotta have exceptional obedience. Because exceptional obedience always leads to exceptional divine experiences from God. 2012. Everybody here in this place. Hallelujah. And all those who are watching this on YouTube. Just learn to obey exceptionally. Amen. Even if it's hard to obey. Even when it's difficult to obey, just obey God. Amen? And let me tell you right now, if you receive this by faith, God will allow you to see things that you have never seen before. God will allow you to experience breakthroughs and miracles that you have not experienced before. It's called exceptional experience. And it will happen if you have exceptional obedience. Don't let your God be here. Hallelujah. Bible tells us that the winds became stronger. The winds became stronger left and right. The waves became bigger than heaven. So instead of focusing on Jesus, he focused on the waves. Amen. In times of shaking, if you want to be unsinkable, you got to keep your eyes on Jesus. You gotta focus your eyes on Jesus. Don't focus your eyes on the trials. Don't focus your eyes on your giants. Focus your eyes on the Lord. You know why? Because however big your giants may be, God is always bigger than them. Amen. Amen. However strong the storms may be, God is stronger than the winds. God is stronger than the storms, and He has dominion and authority over everything. Amen. Your eyes on Jesus. Whatever happens, just fix your eyes.
absent Jesus. And you will find your way. You will never get lost when you fix your eyes on Jesus. That's what happened to Peter. Peter, instead of focusing on Jesus, he focused on the waves. And the Bible tells us he started sinking. In times of shaking, if you want to be unsinkable, you have to have your eyes fixed on God. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says there, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, because He's the author and the perfecter of our faith. Every good thing that He has begun in our lives, He authored it. Amen? And the Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, that He who began a good work in us will be faithful to bring it to completion. will be faithful to bring it to perfection. He began it and He will finish it. The key is this. Fix your eyes on Him. Hallelujah. Come on, let's say God in here. Hallelujah. And so he sank. Ooh. And then he shouted, Lord, send me. And look at the grace of Jesus. Look at the grace of God. When Jesus could have said, Are oh, you of little faith? I will let you drown so you will learn your lesson. And Peter asked for help. He said, Jesus, Lord, save me. The Bible tells us immediately. Immediately. Woo. Praise God. God is the God of the immediately. Say that. Immediately. Jesus reached out and grabbed hold of him and said, Well, little faith, yeah, why did you die? Anyway, next time. Verse 32. And then they both got into the boat and the wind. <laughs> Isn't this amazing? I mean, one part of the story says there was a storm and there were, there were huge waves and, and the wind was like mighty and strong. And then all of a sudden, just like, just like in a wink of an eye, bam! They got into it and everything was silent. That's amazing, huh? You know what this tells us? Even the storms, even the winds, they obey Jesus. Amen. Jesus was in control. Amen. Amen. It's like he turned on the switch for the storms to come. Switch, switch on. And then he, he turned it off. And then everything, everything was at peace. Isn't that a great word of comfort right now to receive? And even if we go through life's difficulties, and even if we go through life's storms and life's trials, we have this confident assurance in us, this faith to believe that Jesus is in control of all these trials, that Jesus has authority and power over the storms, that whatever happens, we can always look unto God, who is always sovereign, who has power, dominion, authority, who will always be in control, who will always be sitting on his throne, and who never loses his power, that whatever happens to us, we can always look to him, that, that person, that God, who will always be ready to save us no matter what, that whatever happens in our lives, whenever we call unto him, he will answer us, because that's his promise, that he will never leave us nor forsake us, that God's love for us will remain the same, yesterday and forever, that his name is Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, that he is unshakable, that he is unchangeable, that he is unstoppable, that he is the Father that loves us so much, that he loves you so much, that even if you lose your faith, he remains the same in your life. He will not give up on you. He will not let you go. And when you call upon him, he will be there to rescue you. His name is God. They both get into the boat, and then the winds die down, 
And the last part was this. We show the last verse. Then the disciples in the boat worshipped Jesus. And then they said, Truly, you are the Son of God. And they exclaimed. Exceptional shaking leads to an exceptional obedience, an exceptional focus, exceptional faith, that leads to the most exceptional conclusion, which is worship. Which is worship. After the storm, after the trial, after you experience God saving you, at those moments when you feel like there's nowhere else to go, and then God rescues you, that is where you actually get to know God more in a deeper way because you experience Him in your darkest hour. And you know what happens next? You know what happens next? You and me, we will be led to a different kind of worship where we just express our love to Him because He became so real in our lives. I am so excited about life this year. You know why? Because there will be shaking. Amen. Amen. You know what happens after we survive the shaking? And we will survive the shaking. In fact, we will thrive in seasons of shaking. Amen. It will not be shaken. We will not be moved. We will not be afraid. Amen. Instead, we will keep our feet standing on the bedrock, on the solid rock. And His name is Jesus. And when we experience Him more, and when He saves us more, when He delivers us more, it will lead to one thing, an exceptional time of worship. 2012, we will worship God like never before. Amen. Amen. How many more you are excited to experience the seasons of shaking? Get your harvest, amen. Get your harvest. There is an exceptional harvest waiting, amen. But there will be seasons of shaking. But don't be afraid. God has given us a word today. Nay, for the yes day. Stop being afraid. Let's give God a big hand. Hallelujah. If you receive it today, let's give God the best love of you. Come on. God says, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Praise God. If you receive it today, let's just stand right now. Let's just worship God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.